Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Welcome today to yet another John Watt X Casio Australia World Exclusive. You saw the pop-up. This video is sponsored by Casio Australia. This is now the fourth of these videos and I must admit it is still a massive thrill to be the kid that gets to play with the toys before they are released. It's also slightly frustrating, however, that I cannot share them with all of you before the embargo dates. For example, I have been sitting on these for nearly two weeks. I couldn't even post a picture on Instagram. Of course, you saw from the thumbnail and the video title, today's exclusive is the brand new GMB2100 Full Metal Casio. Now, this is a watch that I, for one, and I'm sure many of you thought Casio would have released a few years ago now. The G-Shock 2100 range has been a huge hit for them, but Casio have proceeded with new model releases very much at their own pace. It took them nearly two years to make a half metal version and a further nine months to release a model with a tough solar movement and Bluetooth. Finally, today then, they release what is to this point anyway, the ultimate 2100. Full metal case and bracelet with solar and Bluetooth. And when I got the watch in hand, I realized why they hadn't released a full metal variant earlier. If this is the Halo model, the top of the range, then it would not have made sense to release a full metal version until they had updated the movement with the newest module 5691 with solar and Bluetooth. How do they look? Pretty spectacular. Let's flip the camera and check them out. Okay, so let's cut straight to the chase today then and have a look at the family photos of these three shiny new full metal Cassie Oaks. I'm sure that each of you will have your favorites and I'm sure I can pretty much tell which of these three is gonna be the big seller, the most popular version, but leave me a comment, let me know what you think. Do you intend to pick one of these up? Have you been waiting patiently for the last two and a half years now for Casio to release this top spec 2100? There are no real surprises here today. I haven't found any features that I haven't seen on other 2100s. Well, actually, that's not quite true. There is one thing that I haven't come across elsewhere. It's actually visible from these group shots. Perhaps you can guess what it is before I show you a little later on. Now, as this video is sponsored by G-Shock Australia, Casio Australia, I'll leave a link to their website in the description of the video, and I will talk today in Aussie dollars. Now, the prices do vary a little bit depending on the color choice. The silver, which frankly I think is gonna be the most popular one anyway, is also the cheapest. It's 999 AUD. The other two, which I'm calling the gunmetal and the copper, are both $100 more expensive at 1099 AUD. Of course, if you happen not to live in the land down under, do your own research do your own digging, I'm sure these will be available soon in your local region for your local currency. So where does that pricing place them relative to the rest of the G-Shock range? Well, the battery-powered 2100s retail here for 249, and the newer Bluetooth Solar 2100s retail for 329. So these are coming in at roughly four times the price of a battery-powered Casio and three times the price of a resin-banded Bluetooth and solar version. I've always maintained that these full metal models, of course you're still buying a G-Shock, you're buying something that's tough, that's durable, that has 200 meters of water resistance and that can take a beating, but at the same time, you're probably not gonna beat it that hard, are you? Not at $1,000 anyway, and not because you've probably got three, four, 12, or even 26 other G-Shocks in your collection already, and I'm sure at least one of those is your actual designated beater watch. These full metal original Casios, you're getting something a bit different. They're a bit of a statement piece, I think, definitely designed to grab attention. I mean, how could having so much shiny metal on your wrist do anything other than grab attention. I mean, I'm sure some people will give these a walloping, but I'm equally sure that many more of them will have a somewhat more gentle existence as a Saturday night watch or a going to the beach watch, etc., etc. You know what I mean. Now, in terms of dimensions, most of these are gonna be pretty familiar if you've got a couple of 2100s in your collection already. 44.6 mil in diameter, 12.8 millimeters thick, so it is one of the slimmest G-Shocks still. A lug to lug of approximately 49.2 mil to that first articulated hinge anyway. Lug width is not applicable today. And sized up for me with my average size seven inch wrist, this one weighs in bang on 150 grams. Now that is the approximate weight of a Rolex Submariner, by the way. So you're getting a big chunky all metal G-Shock that weighs in at exactly the same weight as a 40 mil all stainless steel diver would. 
Now you can see a couple of things from this case back shot. You can see that it has the premium metal case back as found on the GMWB 5000 metal squares. You can also see the S for sample stamped rather crudely into this one. And as always, Casio prints the module number on the case back. That's the four digits contained within the box in the top there. 5691. This appears to be a brand new module. The instruction manual isn't available online, but from what I can gather by playing with these watches, it's pretty much the same as the one in the resin banded variant. So it's a standard four button Casio layout with this one then, obviously having tough solar and Bluetooth as advertised in the dial. Now you can see there are two lines to that larger LCD display. The top line is permanently displaying a ticking seconds. The bottom line can be switched by pressing the top left button, the top left of those four buttons. It switches from the day of the week indicator to the date and month indicator, or to replicate the analog time. Now the subdial at nine, which used to be the day of the week indicator on the battery powered versions, now does so much more than that on these solar and Bluetooth models. It normally points to either L, M or H, that meaning low, medium or high so you know the state of the play, so you know where the internal battery is in terms of its charge. That battery, by the way, will run for seven months with a full charge, or 18 months if you switch it into power saving mode, assuming you're living in a cave and you aren't charging it any further. Now the bottom left button is the mode button. One push takes you to the world time mode where you can switch between 38 different world cities. If you connect this one to the G-Shock app, and I strongly recommend that you do connect this one to the G-Shock app, that becomes 300 plus world cities. It also keeps the watch running to the perfect time. It checks it four times a day. One more push of that mode button and you're into stopwatch mode. It's the bottom right to start, the bottom right to stop, and the top left to reset. One more push of the mode button and you're into countdown timer. This one currently set for 10 minutes. You can set it up to anything up to 24 hours. Again, start, stop, reset. One more push of the button takes you into the first of five different alarms. It then brings up the hourly chime on or off option. I don't know about you, but I don't like my watch beeping at me. I have quite enough things in my life trying to attract my attention without my watch being one of them. So that's pretty much the basics. Should be familiar if you're used to one of these 2100s. One more useful function. If the hands are fouling the LCD display, if you hold down the light and then press the mode button, it will move them out of the way for you. How very courteous of it. Talking of lights, one of the biggest upgrades of the solar over the battery module 2100 is the addition of a second LED cell. A second very powerful white LED. When you press the light button, not only does it give a clear view of the digital display, but it lights up pretty much the entire dial. Very impressive. But there is also a bit of loom. All previous 2100s had loomed hands. This new full metal one is the first one I've seen with loomed indices as well. Look, it's not amazing when I turn the speed up, they disappear rather quickly, but really that's what the light is for and I'm never gonna complain about a watch having more loom, am I? Metal bracelets on these look like they were carried over straight from the metal squares. The links look good with a mostly brushed upper surface, a little bit of high polish in the centers and those high polished circular recesses either side of the links. The clasp also looks like a carryover with double security triggers, a milled scissor, four holes of micro adjust and the G-Shock branding stamped into the upper section of the clasp. In terms of the way these watches wear, they are clearly heavier than the resin banded versions. I mean, duh but they're still less than 13 mil thick, so they wear surprisingly well for a bigger watch and surprisingly well for a G-Shock. I mean, they look a bit big and bulky from this close-up perspective, but when I pull back a bit, they look like an altogether more reasonable proposition on my seven inch wrist. You can see some of the nice mixed finishing here. There's a circular brush to the upper bezel surface with G-Shock protection, etc., etc. quite deep etched into it. There's a little high polish around the edges of the bezel, the areas protecting those recessed pushers and a linear brush on the upper surface of each of those bracelet links as well. So enough to keep the eye interested, but not so much that it looks overcooked. But then when I pull back further from the pocket shots offering a third perspective, they look perfectly reasonably sized and perfectly wearable, which they are. One of the reasons why the 2100 has sold so well over the last two and a half years is because they look like a big watch, but they don't feel like a big watch at all. 
So when it comes down to colours, I suspect this one, the GM-B2100D, the silver one, is going to be the big seller. It was the big selling metal square, and I can't see that changing here. Under macro, you can see more details that perhaps weren't visible earlier on, like the embossed G-Shock logo, which catches the light depending on the angle, the concentric circles around the subdial at 9 o'clock, and the multifaceted bevel around the two-line LCD display. The hour and minute hand also have a fair degree of complexity complexity to them in terms of colour, angle and finish, and maybe you can see very small parallel stripes down those angled indices. This gives a slightly iridescent effect in sunlight, as I'll show you a bit later on. Now, the GM-2100BD, the one I'm calling gunmetal, Casio refers to this as black. It's going to be for those of you who have always preferred the more low-key, stealthy Cassie Oaks. It's definitely more discreet on wrist than the super shiny silver variant or the copper toned one that I'm going to show you in a few seconds time. But obviously it's materially identical other than the colour finish. But slightly perplexingly, $100 more expensive than the silver one. As is this one, the GMB2100GD. Now Casio refers to this one as rose gold. Mm. I don't really see it as rose gold. To me, it seems like far more like a striking copper colour. I must admit, this is the one that I have been personally drawn to over the last couple of weeks that I've had these in the house. The colour is pretty spectacular. And perhaps more than the other two, it's quite dynamic in how the tones and the hues change depending on sunlight. And hey, if you're going to buy a blingy watch, you may as well buy a really blingy watch. That's what I reckon anyway. Talking of sunshine, it has been like a 1980s Scottish pop group in Sydney all year long. Wet, wet, wet. But I managed to find about three minutes of sun to film this brief footage of each of the three different colour versions. The silver and copper coloured ones are the real eye grabbers. The black slash gunmetal remains the most discreet of the three. Though I'm sure discreet is not necessarily a word I would choose to associate with any of these metal Casios. And in the group shot here, you can just about see what I mean about those iridescent indices. All of those little vertical stripes do add a little bit of prism style rainbow to those indexes, adding another element to the watch to the look overall. So, a lot of fun, for sure. Perfect? Well, not quite. A Grand Aussie is a lot of money for a Casio G-Shock, and like I've said, it's three times the price of the nearly identically spent resin banded versions. So if you want one of these, you will be saving your pennies for a few more weeks, if not a few more months, in order to do so. Let's be honest, none of the three colour variants are what I would describe as legible, are they? This is a complaint I had with the resin banded versions when I reviewed them a few months ago. Only the yellow one had white surrounds to the hands. None of these have white surrounds to the hands. It's actually the rose gold slash copper one that is the most legible. But then again, really only by default in this present company. Now the carryover clasp is probably the weakest material element of this watch. The upper is pressed, feels a bit rattly, just doesn't feel premium for a grand to be honest. I would love to have seen a more substantial clasp used here, certainly with a milled upper, perhaps with a fold over for extra security and adding just a bit more weight, which I think would have helped balance out the not inconsiderable weight that comes with the head of the watch. And one more question for us all to consider. I talked in the intro about this one being the top of the range, the Halo model. It doesn't have multiband six timekeeping. Now this isn't a problem for me because we don't have access to the atomic clock signal down here in Australia. As such, I prefer the G-Shock Bluetooth app, which not only keeps the watch accurate, but it makes setting a lot of the features much easier than it is by pressing those four recess buttons. However, I do know that a lot of Euros and North Americans in particular really appreciate atomic timekeeping on their Casio models, other Casio models that is. Does the release of this Full metal Casio without atomic timekeeping mean that they're not going to put a multiband 6 module into this case at any point. Unfortunately, that is not a question I can answer. I guess we're just going to have to wait and see on that one. So there you have it. Not cheap here in Australia anyway, but pretty spectacular looking. I'm sure it won't be long before I see plenty of these on wrist out and about here in Sydney, 
just in time for the coming spring and summer months. If you're a fan of the 2100, me too, I've made heaps of videos on them. Why not check out one of those next? Thanks for watching this one. I will see you again in a future video.